This is The Fix with me, Karima Brown, and now we take a look at the front pages of the weekend newspapers and what's made headlines this week with Business Times columnist Hilary Joffe. Hilary, thank you so much for giving up your Sunday morning uh, and coming to unpack with us uh, what is in the, the front pages. Not a lot of surprises, but we understand that you think that there should have been some other stories that ought to have made it on the papers. Let's start with if you were the editor at the Sunday Times or at the City Press uh, or even at Media 24, what would you have led with? I think I, w I, would have, I would probably have chosen the same leads. I think the coverage has been absolutely, it's great so yes. on, on, on all forms of media. It's the analysis I'm looking for and I know that that's going to take days or weeks. Mm. And the quest questions that I really am keen to, for people to look at, mm. for example, this low poll. Yes which none of the pollsters factored in. Mm. You know, the, the, all the pollsters were, were looking at 71% turnout. Yeah. This is a 65, and in fact, which is higher than the local government elections a couple of years ago, which were, were much lower than that. So my, my question is, you know, who voted, who didn't vote, and what does that mean for elections in future? Mm. And what does it tell us, in fact, about our country? Mm. Um, so that's one of my questions. And also, you know, the other kind of analysis of... of, of which, which I suppose we'll start to see in the coming months and, and even years is populism hasn't turned out to be as huge as we thought. Yeah. I mean, the EFF is a 10. It's not a 15. Um, what does that tell the ANC? Um, do they not have to kowtow so much to the populists as they have been doing, or do they do more of it because they've fended them off? Yeah. Similarly with the DA and the Freedom Front. Um, yeah. Does this liberate the DA to, to be more centrist or more social democratic and lost the right wing, or do they now feel they have to get them back? So all those kinds of questions, but particularly the, the polls and the demographics and what mm. it tells us about our countries, and in fact about polling, because clearly yes. there's something that's changed profoundly yes. in the South African electorate. And I think we're going to be processing that. So that stuff, I think, is, is, is some of the background interest in this election. Who won the polls, by the way? Do you Nobody won. Well, you, you had, um, in a way, the IRR poll, which we all thought was so crazy, Look, in fact, nobody was right. Yeah. Ipsos was certainly not right. They yeah. ended up at 61% for yeah. the ANC, which yeah. was clearly wrong. Yeah. Uh, nor was the IRR poll. Yeah. Darby Scholz, who's not a pollster, he's a um, yeah. forecaster, yeah. and the CSIR uh, were pretty on the mark. The CSIR I was just were say, pretty on the mark, about seemed to be like two or three minutes after. after and they were modeling. They were yeah. modeling okay. rather than polling. Yeah. So there's polling is... Yeah, but they use poll data, yeah. so so I think I think they're factoring in maybe some of these demographic shifts. I was amazed how how um, accurate they were on the Gauteng mm, vote, yes. you know, because it, it it sort of wavered between about fifty and below fifty and above fifty and below fifty. But and you know, the IRR put um, the ANC in Gauteng at forty-one percent. Right. I had Gareth one, on, under one mm. show under one on radio. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Everett at WITS yeah. was doing the African National Congress poll for the ANC Gauteng specifically, mm -hmm. um, and he put them at about 56. Yeah. Uh, and of course, we know that they just kind of made yeah. it over 50 plus one. But let's turn to the City Press. Um, yeah. Cyril's big plans. And now, of course, this is something that we are all very keen uh, to hear about, to talk about. Uh, what do you make of the story? Uh, um, and if you were to argue uh, what is big plans ought to be uh, that's not in the story. What else should be in here that is not in here? Everyone is looking at the size of the cabinet and who's going to be in the cabinet. And, and I think the papers have mostly focused on will there be corrupt people, will they mm. uh, push out the fight back people, the Zuma mm. fight back people. Um, I'm more interested in, in, in what is the cabinet going to tell us that, they really, that, that the president really is committed to growth and job creation. Mm. And instead of the kind of million empires and yeah. um, fact, factions Hillary, that have been competing in the cabinet until now. And, and, and has he had the resolve and the support to put in a cabinet, which, I mean, the election campaign in the manifesto promised growth and job creation. So, an investment, and that means getting investment and making South Africa investable. And is the cabinet going to reflect that as a priority? That's what I'm interested in. Well, the best person's answer is that it's probably Karima Brown. Maybe, I, mean. <laughs> I mean, does he have, does he, ha I, I, I always, when I was writing about this campaign, I always, thought in my mind that 57% would have given, would have, north of that, 
would have given him a reasonably clear shot at the mm. kind of presidency that he... Obviously, he's going to make compromises. He has to. That's yeah. All politicians do. That's the game. Um, but you make the point in your column in, the, in Business Times today, Hillary, that you know, you, you, it's time to stop talking up the country. You've actually literally got to do something now. Mm. And what does that look like? I mean, you talk about job creation. What is it, give me an example of a job creating policy initiative that you could take. I, I don't think you have a job creating policy. I think you make the country investable. You okay. make South Africa investable, which it isn't. I think what has been done in the last year has been incredibly impressive in yeah. a way. Um, you know, tackling corruption and state yeah, yeah. capture, yeah, no, no. Um, getting investors on board, sort of. But it still hasn't created a, gen a, 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 a story which, yeah. and a genuine story in which you can invest. We still have dysfunctional state-owned enterprises, particularly Eskom, and that's really material for people who are looking to yeah. build factories or invest in new cloud computing, whatever. And we, and, um, yeah. we still, we still, uh, uh, the president committed to the, uh, the World Bank easing the doing business in yeah. South Africa yeah. in this last zone. Huh? Meanwhile, There's, I haven't seen anything on that we're score. still sending home the CEOs of foreign companies because back our home visas to get their are crazy. Visas. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's just we start asking skilled people from coming. Let, let me just quickly, because we're running out of time, let's just look at the Sunday Times headline. It says, Cyril rescues the ANC. Now, we saw how Ace Mahashuri struggled to actually acknowledge that. I mean, he flatly yeah. actually refused. Yeah. Um, uh, Hilary, in your mind, how important was Cyril's personal brand uh, to the African National Congress? Is it what, what saved their bacon? The, the Sunday Times' analysis certainly is that if you look at the split voting between the provincial and the national, it is the Cyril effect mm. um, to, to a significant extent. And certainly if we look at a scenario in which going all the way back, NDZ had won, we'd have been looking at a lot of coalitions, I yeah. suspect. I'm not a political analyst, I'm an economic person. But certainly I think that, and, and he made the right commitments. If you look at all the, not the polls of voting, but what matters to voters, jobs are right up there. Mm. And he made all the right commitments. And mm. I think when you listen to him talk, he understands what it takes and he's serious about it. Whether he can do what it takes is what we're going to be watching very closely to see in the next few yeah. months. Hilary, I understand there is a column that piqued your interest in, uh, is it the Sunday World? Um, Sunday World, yeah. Yes. Uh, what is it? What, what, After what is all this coverage, this was my favorite of the day. This is a column in the Sunday World about fingernails. And all this, <laughs> with all this dispute about the, uh, the little mark, mark. I still got my little mark. Yeah. I didn't bleach it out. Um, uh, somebody wrote about, you know, all, people had, the nation's fingernails were on display and they did not look good. <laughs> Can people not like look to personal hygiene and the attractiveness yeah. of their fingernails? And this was my, it was my favourite to the morning. I have okay, to say. fantastic, Hilary. Thank you so very much. Well, that's your fix for the week. Take care. See you again next week.